out there everyone down in the on the lands of the of the far from the reach the south to the north to the east and the west we are tonight here to showcase to you on peaks and racing tv the next race and the next evolution of elemental racing league's dirt series action as they now bring out for a one time only this season the ume modifieds at williams grove speedway hi good everyone i am christopher the crusader shriver and welcome back to the show as always we're looking to get down and dirty here in the UMP mods as they are getting ready to start off their first heat of the night. Two heats in this one with an A main of 10 drivers locked and loaded here. And we're about to get all the craziness and the madness started up. Let's take a look on our poll. The number 14 Crusader Shriver will be our front runner. It is outside. That's Cody Scott, the 65. Row number two, it's going to be Mr. Aaron Clark. The number 19 is outside. Kenneth Crawford, the number 12. Final starter, Eric G. Gann in the 51 will line up up into position. And laps in our heats here. Each heat progressing and getting crazier as we go. This will definitely be a burnt up track off the start, but they will clean everything up for the A main. So awesome look at designs on these beasts here tonight. Got a little bit of an American man made style on that 14 for Saturday. He told me earlier, he really wasn't sure what he was coming up with. He said his artist just kind of did something, and it, that's what it ended up looking like. He says, I'm cool with it. So, 19 of, Eric, of uh, Aaron Clark got a nice little design going on that one, too. A little graffiti tag on that, too. Of course, you can't forget to go see MR Customs 51, always having that solid look. And Kenneth Crawford rocking a little Matt DeBenedo, Ronnie Blaney style out there. Nicely done. Well, it's time to figure out who can outsmart and who outwits the other as we bring him off to the green. Here we go. And these things, if you thought those dirt stocks were hard to master, I think you got a whole new level of racing mentality here. Oh, he's sideways going into turn one, three. There goes the Crusader. He manages to swing it back down. You don't want to over accentuate that. Not like he'll do that again, though, right? You want to try to keep these things as straight as possible, otherwise these cars will give you a bit of a headache and a bit of a fit here. They are a challenge and a half. They play no games and they do not cater to anybody's chances here. You can just see how sideways they are already again. They are just getting coiled over on the right sides. The 14 of Crusader Shriver trying to defend off the 19 of Aaron Clark. Better turn there out of turn one and two. Man, just to get a good run down the bottom. The 14 has the lead. He's like he's trying to drive it in a lot harder there in turn three and four than anything. I know there's a slick spot down there, but he's got to really master trying to keep it just a little bit straighter. There's a lot of open area to give up to them if you're not careful down there. It's Cody Scott. The 65 throws a little haymaker there at Eric G. Gann. The 51 trying to hold him back as they come down the back straightaway. And that opening two right there you see in the back stretch is going to be a bit of an error issue for these guys if they're not careful. We've seen it before with late models where they just overdrive the slightest bit. That rear end just kind of kicks out from underneath them. 
and they can smack that wall, they can smack that opening in the wall down there. It is so easy to do. You see a lot of drivers kind of moving around from it, but they still have to try to corner off to get to that entry into the turn three zone. Pretty good battle here in the heat number one. So far, the UMP's proven to be a pretty good show so far. Eric Ann now looking for the slider inside. He gets got a little bit loose there. Has to straighten it out and get it to turn. If you're wondering how do you even get these things to turn much so to keep them straight, it's very simple. Just watch the throttle rhythm. The harder you hit that gas, the harder that thing steers right. So you got to make sure you're catching it right and make sure you're steering it other ways around and all about it. That's the only way to survive out here. Clark trying to get the Petrov towing number 19 ahead and further of the field right now. Eric Gann has a lot of damage on that front end. Looks like he might have overshot the corner and ended up taking a piece of it. While the 65 of Cody Scott continues to move ahead of him. The only RC controller driver known in iRacing, Eric G. Gann. Showing he can hit, he can master not just one series, he can master two. As Kenneth Crawford in the 12 tries to move around him. The number 12 now, Kenneth Crawford looking to put some motorcraft machine up ahead. He's got a run, got a little bit of speed down there. The Terminator chassis is being put to good use. But doesn't seem as though he's hit, he's handling the nerves as much as I think he wants to. We're going on board here with Kenneth. But look at this. Look at the right side of that. Look at the inside of that car. And you see how much he is steering that thing right and inside. The only problem I'm noticing, though, he's trying to get it too straight in the entries in the apex of the turn. That could be hurting him a little bit. You want to try to keep that thing more squared right so you can drive that thing sideways out the trap at the 14 of Crusader Shriver. Pretty much absolute dominating and perfecting the performance. The 14 will win heat number one. And a solid victory for the, Amer for the American man-made number 14 machine. Eric Clark, the 19, getting a good run in. Cody Scott, the 65, good showing from him. Great stuff in heat number one. Here's your, heat here's your heat one results now popping up on your screen. Presented by PTM Racing. TV. This is going to go to the Crusader Shriver. Second going to Aaron Clark. Third to Cody Scott. Fourth to Eric G. Gann. And fifth to Kenneth Crawford. Rounds out your first heat of the night. Bring him on to the pole. Let's get him down and settle away. Five more needing to be entered in into their individual positions here for EA Main. Here's how we start this one off as we get right out and down to the nitty gritty of it. Go ahead and get that uh, technical difficulties out of the way real quick. There we go. That's better. I feel more refreshed now. Okay, anyway. The MPI number 84. That's Matthew Hofford. He'll lock him on the on the inside. On the outside of him, it's the 07 Cindy, the closer Taylor. Row number two, it's going to be the number nine, AJ Hall to his outside. That's the 74, Joshua Godinez. Final starter, the number five, Chantel, the throttle bottle. Here we go now, heat number two, waste no time, get around the track one time, and let her rip, here we go. Oh, you're already seeing some of the experience off the starts there, these things do not like to go from a, sm from a slow start to a fast one, I'll tell you that much. Here they come down out of turn one and two. Out of the gate, the five trying to make a move off on the run as a 74 Joshua Godinez and the five and the nine of AJ Hall, excuse me, going out of here. Cindy the closer, Taylor looking to the inside, looking for a run there on the left side there, Matthew Hofford, Hofford though, getting a run in the MPI 84. Has to try to stay out of that slick, he said earlier, that's where his trouble seemed to lie in, he's got more trouble though as Josh Rogodina starts to intervene. Oh, and Matthew Hofford goes for a run, caution, caution, caution. Chantel, throttle bottle, Matthew Hofford and AJ Hall all involved in that one, Godinez getting a little bit of it too. What a mess, holy smokes. Here's the look at the PT Mr. Replay. Here's what happened as they were coming around that corner. That just got a little too sidewindy, I think, for Hofford's taste, and he had no idea what was coming next. These things will shoot right if you do not control the throttle rhythm, and I've said it before again, watch for that back stretch to be a factor. I mean, I'm off right now. I gotta be thinking, what the heck did I just get myself into even trying to drive that in like that, man? What was I doing? That's probably my first thought. Holy smokes. 
Well, there's two onboard cameras here. The first one's gonna be Hoffer. Watch right here. You see, here's AJ Hall, and he's having to work around that, but he seems to have forgot the wall is there as well. And boy, that camera got to work out, but thankfully, the car was able to straighten out all right. Here is the onboard camera hero, Joshua Godinez, as they were coming around turn one and two. Here's what he saw. See him just working the draw. He's trying to go to the outside more and looking for a run on Hoffer. Backs off. Hoffer gets the run, then smacks the wall, goes up, up, and watch out. Oh, no. Insert a Cars meme reference, if you will. Wow. Bit of a wild start to this one here, and the driver's already getting ready to field him back into position here. We're already getting ready to go back to the green. We're going to shovel them up for another green flag run. Here we go. Coming off the corners and off and away we go. Hoffer got back out quickly. So did uh, Joshua Godinez and A.J. Hall. Oh! And A.J. Hall sends it straight into the back stretch wall. Gets a piece of it. And the nine, unfortunately, gets his heat done and over with for this one. What a tough break. For AJ Hall, man, he looked like he was going to get a run off, get a good position in, and then he just smashes the wall and sends that thing in for a ride. And a battle for the race lead. Joshua Godinez, the 74, and the 07 is Cindy Taylor going to go have a little fun. The Cheeto 07, Cindy the Closer Taylor looking to try and show she's not just an asphalt girl. She can take it on with the dirt, boys. Hear that throttle rhythm and how she's handling the turns, but she's also trying to keep the thing in line. Easier said than done when you got a whole list of drivers trying to pace around you and pack this one down. Chantel, the throttle bottle, the number five as well. Currently the only other female in the pedal in the middle racing the dirt series trying to took a charge up or two. One thing I'm noticing as well here, and I guess maybe this is just me, but something we saw earlier on, the guys and gals that were really fast out there, they seem to be driving it more turning right and keeping it straight to the right as they're in the corners, whereas those that are trying to keep it straight left as they enter, they're losing a lot of speed and momentum. It's almost like they're kind of losing all the cornering, and I think that may be something they need to look to in the A main, because right now Joshua Godinez walks away with this one. Big victory for him and he number two, but... I mean, again, it's going to boil down to who can out and outsmart the other and who will have the longer-lasting car here. Bottom line, we are in for a show now, race fans. The A main is coming your way here. Here is your Heat 2 results popping up, presented by PT Racing TV. Joshua Godinez wins Heat 2. Second goes to Cindy the Closer Taylor. Third to Chantel the Throttle Pottle. Fourth to Matthew Hoffert. Fifth, A.J. Hall rounding out your field as we now get set and prepared for the ultimate of finishers here tonight. Field is getting set away and they're getting settled down for this one. This looks to be the moment they've been waiting for. Here they are, race fans. Let's send it down for our A main roster lineup. Presented by P-Team Racing TV, ladies and gentlemen, this is your A main event on the pole. The 14 Crusader Shriver leads them to the outside. Joshua Godin is in the 74. Row number two, the 19 Aaron Clark is outside the 07. And Cindy, the Colter Taylor. Row number three, Cody Scott, the 65 is outside. Chantel, the throttle puddle. Row four, Matthew Hoffert will be on the outside of the 84. And then inside of him will be... The Eric G. Gann, the 51 final starters in the 12. Kenneth Crawford is outside A.J. Hall in the 9. Here we go, race fans. Pace truck is coming off out of turn 4, and everybody's bumping and banging already. I think they just want to go. Well, you get your chance to go now here. Here we go down the stretch, and they're off. And the 14 gets a great start out of the gate, just completely hammers the throttle down. He is off and charging. He's off and running. 
like a horse in the like a horse down in Prairie Meadows here in Iowa. They are moving through the distances, moving through the fields, looking for any little push, any little give they can get on the track, and a lot more surface to clear out here. Fire sent up out into the wall for just a brief moment, manages to keep, stay clear of it. Every driver for themselves as they lean him down across the back straightaway here. Everyone kind of getting in a bit of trouble though. Oh, there's major trouble there out of turn three. The throttle shent up bottle and Ken Crawford getting tagged in. You saw Cindy the Colder Taylor getting a piece in there as well. Oh, Ken, that's not nice to do to a lady on the track. What are you doing, my friend? I know she got you there, but you didn't have to hit her once or twice, my friend. Come on now. I don't think by any means that was intentional, but here's what happened. Look at the five. Just smacked the wall protection. She goes really cart. She literally goes spinning up there. You might as well call that the tail whip in the in the air. She went flying so high, you would have thought she was Wiz Khalifa in the Dexter's Laboratory. Let's see, coming off down the back straightaway. Here's what happened. You can see right there. There's that mistake. You just cannot get the car to do that it will give you trouble it will give you fits and it will give you plenty of headaches if you're not careful that's exactly what happened there and unfortunately ends up starting up our drivers once more they will get them double file them up back into the restart zone as we are about to set that tone back into the field double them up and we are ready now So Joshua Godinez, the Sunny Ford, managing to get ahead of Aaron Clark. He will be able to now take over the outside line while the Crusader Shriver still has the 14 in the lead. And I don't think anybody's had it more rough in the dirt as of late than probably that 14. He really has not shown any will, any will or any strength to really keep going. He told me earlier he's been working out a lot of kinks and bugs in his new wheel. But he said after about a month of trying or so, he finally thinks he's got it figured out. Well, so far, I think he might be up to something there because he is a race leader. As they come off down on the front straightaway here, they will come off the gun into the zone. We're back underway. And you can just see, too, how quick these things have to go turning right off the gate. As soon as you hit that gas, those things just send it straight right. You better be catching it. Down across the back straightaway here. Everything's clean so far. Everyone's just trying to stay out of trouble. As I see that, here comes Eric G. Cannon. Clark right down in the, the middle of, the, of 74. Joshua Godinez. Whoa. Oh, again. Gets a piece from the others. And Cindy the Colter Taylor trying to straighten that thing out. Man, these things take a beating out there, though. That's for sure. As caution flies again. Caution's out. Caution's out. Well, to be honest with you, I'm not really sure why the caution was thrown there. I don't know if anybody, I don't know if they were a little worried about them getting a little more tangled up in there, but to me, that looked like it's hard racing. We'll take a look at the PTM Insta replay. I don't know. You guys be the judgment call on this one. To me, this looks like just a hard race battle for the position here. Let's take a look at it from the full start. So here we go. Watch very carefully the same for the 19 as well as the 14 with the air again kind of popping in. Watch closely. This is our chopper cam right now. This is what's watching them from above. And again, you can just see how more straight these things are straight to the right, but you can see they're also turning them in quite nicely. Here's where Godin has got into problems. Gan manages to sneak his way around. The 19 now moves up ahead. The 14s have got problems. He's trying to straighten it back out. He doesn't realize Gan's there. And then Godinez gets a piece. And then Cindy. Gets a piece, but looks like everything got straightened out here. Nothing wrong, and then it just gets a caution. Maybe, uh, race, maybe just a little slight error on their end there, but that's all right. I think with these being a new series, obviously nobody wants to make too many mistakes or have any problems out there, so you can't blame them for trying to get them squared away. But I got a feeling the drivers probably want to race a little bit more than that tonight. All right. Steve McDonald coming on board here tonight, rooted on for Chantel, the throttle bottle here tonight. Steve, it's good to have you on board here tonight, sir, and good to have everybody on board here tonight. If you're just now tuning in for the first time on Facebook Live, thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you like and follow us up here on Facebook. If you're watching the YouTube and later on, we appreciate you for coming on out. We hope you subscribe as well. Catch all the action when we go live on Facebook and by liking and follow us up there and subscribing on our YouTube 
to make sure that those that can't watch it live can see it later on. All races and broadcasts will be sent over to YouTube afterwards as we go back to the green flag. The charge is up. We're ready to fight. And Matthew Hoffert already problems down the back straightaway. The MPI boy is having some problems in that Logitech machine. As they come around down out of turn four, bumping and banging. These UMPs, I swear, man, they just don't know what else to do but bump and bang. That is amazing. They're sent so far right that they can basically just kind of hammer each other in a little bit. I think, in all honesty, that makes for some really interesting racing. Whereas the late models, they're a little bit more tricky to get around because even though they got fenders to them, for some reason, you can't seem to really bump as much as you can with these things. And I think a lot of that has to do with the way the rear end is shaped in and the way they come off. Again now. Trying to make a move or two coming off out of turn two. Looks like he's got a little run coming up there on Eric Clark. Clark trying to hold him back. Hoffert troubles. No caution though. They're going to let him keep going. The whole field trying to hunt down the Crusader Shriver. He's got a pretty good size lead of 14. Is he? Is the Crusader back to form? That is the question a lot of the drivers have asked as of late. But the 19 of Aaron Clark says, I don't care what he's up to. We're going to take him down one way or another. And Joshua Godinez, remember not too long ago, he was a runner-up in the season championship standings. Fell short to Eric Gigan by one race and one point. It could have been a win. It could have been a solid season for him and a victory as for Gan. Same can't quite be said here at the 51. Gets a little bit sideways, wobbly. Off the corners, manages to get straightened back out. You know, by the way, folks, a lot of these drivers, they've never even touched these UMP mods until literally just this day. They've never touched them, never raced them. And right now, I gotta be honest with you, they're doing an extremely good job handling the nerves and handling their momentum. Cody Scott going for the slider in a turn three and four. He's got to run on Cindy, and Cindy Taylor managing to open the door for him and takes it over. What a move. And now the Cheeto 07 machine is going to have some work to do here as a number 65 of Cody Scott has the advantage. Impressive to say the least here as they work off more here. Cindy still putting up a fight. Great stuff by the closer. But your race leader is a man charging hard off the track. The Crusader Shriver. We go on board here with him for a lap. And if memory serves me, if you looked earlier on what was going down with those inside corners and how they're turning, I think this is a good telling of just what you're supposed to do with these UMP mods. Keeping it nice and straight as caution is out, caution is out. What is going on down there? Oh, we got a, Cody, got a 65 of Cody Scott crashed in down there. All right, well, that's, and let's do. We got more to do here, so let's take a look at the PTM Instant Replay and find out what had happened here. Let's we'll go to the onboard camera here, and again, just a minute to show you what's making some of these guys so fast. Look at the 65 once again. That back stretch wall, man, is just taking drivers left and right. It's taking their souls, and Scott is literally got to be fuming, knowing the fact that his rear end took a beating and a bashing on there. You can see that whole rear end locked up in the ratio. He's trying to get strained up, get it back into pit road. He manages to do so. We'll take a look at the PTM Instant Replay from his onboard camera. This is what it looks like when you have something like this happen. It's not fun, I'll tell you that much. One more look at it. Just catches that back stretch, the slice bit, gets into the wall. He's already on the throttle, so he's trying to keep it going. And as a driver, when you're flipping around like that, I'll tell you something with this new wheel. Uh, you definitely feel all the forces and all the... Uh, Feedback coming back from that wheel. It does not feel good. So field ready to stretch him back up. We're going double file now on the back straightaway. And again, I was talking earlier about this, but you know, we saw earlier when the track slicked up, you really got to start steering these things more towards the right in entries and exits and really use the throttle as your equalizer. 
Can they keep doing that? And can they keep the momentum alive here as they bring it back to the green flag now? They're off and running. Godinez and Clark are right up back with a 14 of Crusado now. And with 19 laps to go, anything is possible here. Just a showmanship and a fight to say the least. Down the back straight away they go here, and the, and the closer, Cindy Taylor, is already rocking on the inside, looking for a chance to take on the boys. She's in the fourth place spot. The 19 of Aaron Clark trying to get a run down on the 14. Clark looks to take advantage. He's got a run. He's got a seam. He's got a lot of momentum coming his way. Crusaders in trouble. Can the 14 hold the throttle back here of Clark? Clark is right there on him. He's got a hard charge coming down across that back front on the front straightaway. And he's not going to the bottom line as much anymore. I think he knows that Clark is down there, so he's trying to move the outside in this proverbial line. I don't know if he's going to be able to link that last one, but you hear the throttle. You hear him just clanking and just pushing that thing to its fullest. The pedal is straight in the metal right now. I'm telling you, folks. Godinez, Clark, they're all right there with him. Can they get a runoff? Clark's got the inside line now, starting to charge away. They'll lead him down the back straight away. Anybody's guess who takes this one? They lead it in. No, caution's out, caution's out, caution, caution. Kenneth Crawford is, uh, let's just say, got a wheel bearing broke on that 12. Let's just say that much. And he's going to get a tow down there. They're going to tow him away. They're saying, no, you cannot keep going, sir. Although we're going to take a look at this one. There's a little bit of action coming on the front straightaway as it was. Let's take a look at this. You see right there, the 9, 65, and the 5 all kind of getting into a little bit. Clark getting a run down there. Can him back to that. Back on the edge, and watch what happens here. Kenneth just drives in a little too hard, and... Hoffer gets a piece of him. But how did he mess up the rear? Did he lock the rear end up? How did he do that? How did he lock the rear end up on these things, man? I know these things are delicate sometimes, but you did I think that's the last that's the first time I've ever seen them lock up like that. Whoa. What a tough break there for Kenneth Crawford to say the least. And he's still in pit road, unfortunately, so there's no way he's gonna get out of the time. Next week, though, the Dirt Series isn't just coming back to Dirt Stocks. They're sticking in the new Diversity League. They're going to go and run the Pro 2 Lights at Barker Speedway. It's coming your way next week, so be sure to stay tuned with us. As we come off out of turn, one and two out of the gate here, the Crusader Striver has the advantage of Aaron Clark. will try to get him back again. AJ Hall, like a madman, trying to fight him off in the back straight away. Look at the throttle shift up, auto moving. The chain's in. Wait a minute. Crusader and Clark get into it. Godinez with a run. We got problems on the turn. Three, four, exit. We got one upside down. That's the nine, Aaron Clark. Oh, AJ Hall, excuse me. Caution, caution. Holy smokes. This is, this is not looking good if you're any of the drivers out right now. They got to be infuriated knowing this is going on. But I want to know something. What the heck happened? Up front, this that's hard racing, I'll give you that, but what happened here? Let's take a look at this one. Here's the full replay. Here's what here's what transpired. Watch this. As I come across here, out of the turn, into the corner. Look at Shriver. He just sent it straight sideways. He's got problems right there. And you can see the you can see Clark trying to straighten out. So was the 14. And the 5 going up on the side roof. And then AJ. Well, let's just say uh, he was wishing he found somewhere else to hide right about now in the way that thing was turning around. What a tough break there. And right now, we're going to have ourselves a new leader, folks, as well. That's right. A new leader is going to be crowned here as Joshua Godinez has taken the race lead away. Wow. So all in that madness now for the first time, we're going to have to see if the 14 has anything for these guys here being in that uh, pack zone. He's, it's the first time he's had a start on the outside row all day long. He's been inside on the heat. He started the first in the heat. He had a tremendous lead in the first half. Now this one, it's track breaking down and the car's starting to come around. They are starting to get closer and closer together. This could get dangerous here if they're not careful. They'll have eight laps to go here.
All right, they'll lead him down out of turn three, turn four. This time by Joshua Godinez for the first time tonight is going to find himself in the hot seat. Can he make it working? Can he make it stick here as they get to the green flag? Back on out. Here we go. And Crusader up on the tight side. Look at her. She can't go front of the inside. Three wide salute for the race lead. And the MR Customs 51 just full on sends it, trying to make a run on all of them. The 14 up, I side he's trying to build the speed, make the run. He tags all the front straight away. The rear end is sliding out from underneath the trouble caution. And the bad luck and the demons once again catch the 14 and unbelievably Gannon and Godinez managing to escape with their cars. I don't know how they got away with that one, but holy smokes. These things are a mess, and they are fun to watch, but what the heck happened here? Here's another look at Watch that's 14. He hits the first time he's throwing up that high side all day long. He doesn't know where Gann is. He tries to keep it close to the wall, but the rear end this time tags him, and he just gets caught in the midst of it. Wow. Unbelievable. This this is a not this is a mess. But that's dirt track racing for you. It's fun to watch when it's bad and it's fun to watch when it's good. That's all you need to know. Here we go. We're coming to the very end of this one. Who is gonna walk away with the W here at Williams Grove? We gotta declare a winner somehow, man. We gotta get this one finished up. We're gonna have pretty much a green white checkered finish coming up. Three laps to go. Anybody's guess who wins this one. Here they come. Off a of turn four this time by. It's time to sling this one in one more time. And whoa, look at the five cents of Pottle. She just got a whole lot of run there on that front straightaway. Cody Scott just literally was sitting there. And the five has to back off. They're trying to tell her, no, you got a black flag for doing that. No, I don't know how she did. If you don't go, you don't go. You got to remember that. All right, Aaron Clark and Joshua Godin is trying to hunt down Aaron G. Gann Gann right now with the race lead. Two laps remain. Next time, by the white flag. Gann goes too far upside. The, the front locks up on him. It's, look at the slider delivered by Gann Godin is now with the race lead. Gann trying to hunt him back down. They come off at its turn three and four. They'll lead it down to the white flag. Joshua Godin is looking to possibly secure his first win of the season. Gann and Clark. All in this to win it. Gann looking for the run on the inside. He's got a charge. He's got a seam. He's got a side by side. They collide on the back straight away. Gann is gone. He crashes in. Joshua Godinez for the first time in his career. He call himself a race winner. Joshua Godinez is winning the UMP Mod Race. Second will go to Aaron Clark in the 19th. Third to Sydney the Colter Taylor. Fourth to Matthew Hoffert. And fifth to Shentz El Throttle Bottle. An incredible race. Wow, <laughs> what a mess, but that was a lot of fun to watch, and I hope you enjoyed that one as well, folks. Holy cow. And the thing is, Pro 2 Lights next week at Bark River Speedway, it can get even more crazy. Let's just say that. But Joshua Godinez, weeks and months of trying led to this moment. And they had old Rust Bucket 74. He wasn't the cleanest car out there, but he has the best looking car tonight because he's in victory lane for this one. What a victory for the young man managing to pull off this W. And still mentioning maybe what he feels was a little bit of much needed redemption from losing the season championship just two seasons ago. Is this the start? of a resurgence for him and his crew we shall soon see but race fans make no bones about it this was an all-out thriller from start to finish here is your final result for the feature godinez is your victor clark second third to sydney taylor fourth to matthew offert fifth to chantel bottle six to eric g, eric g. Gann. seven to cody scott eight to crusader shriver ninth to aj hall Kenneth crawford rounds out in tenth 
And that all will do it. Here tonight, if you're racing here in the UMP Modifieds here in Battle of I've literally lost my breath. I'm going to have to get out of here, man. That was insane. That was crazy. But nevertheless, folks, for those that tuned in with us, thank you so much for watching on our Facebook live stream. Be sure to head over to our YouTube end as well and uh, subscribe there and catch this action as you'll see it there. Well, we cannot thank you enough for all the support. Tomorrow night, only one race to be shown. It is the Spartan Logistic Management LLC iRacing iRock Series coming your way here on PTM Race TV. For now, though, I bid you farewell. Thank you. God bless. Take care. Until the green flag flies next time, folks. See you then.